Hi everyone and welcome to the brand new video series called What the JIT and um, we're going to discuss in this video series how the JIT compiler actually emits machine code uh, when we write C sharp and uh, we're going to be looking at some interesting examples how the JIT actually optimizes our code uh, without us even to having to do that operation and we're going to look at uh, certain examples where it kind of falls flat in, in certain places and it would be good to know um, what are these places because there's ways in C sharp code to be able to force JIT to do the correct thing so that's um, that's beneficial to us. All right, let's start with a simple example. So if I have a project in csharp.net, either by having a library or an executable, um, what's going to happen when we compile is we're gonna actually emit a bunch of IL instructions. So IL is an intermediate language, uh, which um, is a fully featured language, but it's a, it's a bit low level as compared to C Sharp. And that gets interpreted by the JIT compiler. And the JIT compiler will, first of all, take the code, interpret it, and it, it can evaluate the, the, code, the code. But what tends to happen, and this is, um, this is going to be a simplistic view because there is a lot of JIT compilers even in C Sharp between like the different implementations. But what tends to happen with the JIT compiler is that it will emit a call instruction to a trampoline function and the second time we're going to call this function so if we're going to go here the second time through a code um, this call to the trampoline function will emit correct machine instructions depending on the architecture um, depending on the runtime and all sorts of you know different variables and that machine code, that for example, that function that has now the correct machine code um, will get patched. So that initial call to the trampoline function usually gets patched. And from, from now on, we're just using the you know machine code version of the function. So we're gonna be using a sharp lab today and a compiler explorer because uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to first of all see what machine instructions get uh, emitted from the Sharp Lab. And we're gonna use Compiler Explorer because Sharp Lab only supports C Sharp and sometimes we probably want to see how different languages do it because sometimes they do it uh, do a worse job and sometimes they do a better job. And that's dependent on the language, on the compiler and uh, all, you know, a bunch of other stuff, well, features. So, Let's start with a very simple example. Let's switch to the assembly view. So um, no functions, so nothing really to, to see yet, but let's start with a public um, int m function where um, we're just gonna return 42 and let's have another function called n, which will return 10 plus m. And as you can hopefully see, we don't have a need to call the m function here because the JIT compiler correctly assumed that this is a const and 10 plus 42 is yet another const. So there's no need to be able to do any like addition operations, function calls, nothing like that. So this is actually a very uh, powerful optimization that compilers tend to do and uh, it avoids a lot of like necessary calls. So let's, let's do something more interesting now. Let's do uh, arithmetic. So let me modify this function and introduce a variable called a and let's do return a divided by two. And as you can see, now we have something slightly more complicated uh, where we're gonna just load our a into this register. Now we're gonna do a shift right it's a logical shift, right? And then we're gonna do the addition and then we're gonna do an arithmetic shift, right? By one. So this is 31, by the way. And why is that? Why just not do shifts? Let me switch um, the view to the calculator that I have sort of built, uh, link, link in the description. Whatever you have a number, like for example, 10, 
and we just want to divide by two, what we have to do is we have to shift by one and it's, it's obviously five. That's good. But the extra shifts exist because what we're going to end up is, is minus numbers. So um, that's the problem that we have to solve. And if we have like minus 10 shift right, then that's still correct. But what you're going to see is that ints have to be rounded down when there's a fraction. So if we have like, you know, 11, then that's still five. But what happens if we have minus 11? That's minus six. That's incorrect. So we have to fix that problem somehow. And what the JIT does in this case is it's going to take like minus 11. It's going to do a shift by 31, which is minus one. And that's incorrect because remember that this shift is an arithmetic shift, not a logical shift. So the difference between an arithmetic shift and a logical shift is that in logical shift, if you have to shift to the right, you have to fill that empty space with something. And in logical shift, you just fill it, fill it out with zeros. In arithmetic shift, what you have to do is you have to take the most significant bit and then clone that most significant, most significant bit. So in terms of 31, uh, our significant bit is going to be one and then that's why we're gonna clone. So it's not something that happens if we have a logical shift. So in order to be able to simulate this example, we have to create a logical shift. And that's, um, that's not difficult. Uh, so let's take minus 11, um, shifted right by 31. Let's do end one. And this is our solution. So let's use that. And remember in assembly, we're, we're gonna add minus 11 again, because that's what the JIT did. And finally, we're gonna shift by one. So that's the full algorithm that the JIT generated. So what happens now? Well, it's correct, we have minus five. But uh, let's test it quickly, what happens if we have 11? We have five. So this calculator can give you some insights to how this all worked here because it follows the process and you have operation by operation by operation. So if, if you're confused, then just pause the video and uh, try to figure out how this works. Okay, moving on. So unsurprisingly, if uh, we have a multiplication, we're gonna shift it the other way and multiplication is a bit easier. That's how <clears throat> we have only a single instruction. But in, in the divisions case, if we want to have something uh, more simplified and we don't care about, about the minus sign, when we switch this to a unsigned int, then we're just gonna have a simple, very simple shift. Okay. So what happens if we have that like division by three? And now it's a bit um, more complicated. So the JIT compiler uh, generated something else, but uh, the, the most important bit is that we do have multiplication now and we didn't have multiplication before. And if we do like divide, division by four, uh, we still use the shift trick, but the shift trick is um, slightly more complicated because we have to do an end operation. But in terms of implementation, it's still a variation of this algorithm here. So that's not uh, not, not a terrible like thing to, to have because it's still gonna be much more efficient than just multiplication. And let's quickly see what's going to happen if we're gonna multiply. That's still okay, but what, what's gonna happen if we're gonna multiply by three? Um, well, something interesting happens really, because what, what we were doing is we're multiplying by two, then adding one. Multiply by two, then add the A again. So perhaps that's faster. I'm not even sure. So yeah. Uh, and if we're gonna do um, something else, let's do like multiply by zero, for example, then it will just do any XOR operation because that doesn't make a lot of sense to do anything with this, not even shifting, because XOR is obviously going to be a bit faster. So um, yeah, 
So that's all for this introduction video. And the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you uh, more interesting examples, but we have to start somewhere. And uh, we're gonna be looking at loop cloning and uh, how that affects performance. And then we're gonna be looking at um, like more crazy stuff. Let me just uh, say that. So, um, you know, thanks for watching. And if you like the video, if you, if, if you feel that you're gonna like the series, uh, please like and subscribe and uh, see you, you know, see you next time. So yeah, bye.